Hi, I'm Frank Spangler, and welcome to a brand new series here at Learning Media Skills on how to film with the Canon C200 camera. For the last six years or so, I have been filming almost exclusively with Canon DSLR cameras, but recently have made the switch, or shall we say migration, back to a dedicated video camera. And so I thought it would be nice to start a series here at Learning Media Skills on how to film with this camera so that those who might be renting a unit or just getting started with a camera uh, can pick up a few quick tips and tricks. For our first episode, I would like to show you how to edit uh, the, especially the Canon RAW footage on my favorite edit application, Edius Pro. As I started working with this camera, I did a lot of research on the internet and I saw a lot of tutorials of people working with the raw footage on DaVinci, uh, Premiere Pro, Final Cut, but nothing with Edius Pro. And so for those Edius Pro users out there, I thought I would uh, share some of the things that I have uh, discovered as I have uh, started editing this footage on Edius Pro. Let's get started. One of the first things that you'll want to do is head on over to the uh, Canon software page for the Canon C200 camera and uh, download the latest package of LUTs provided by Canon, and here we have it, uh, the Canon Lookup Table version 2018, and you'll want to keep these updated. Canon uh, releases new versions of their LUTs uh, quite frequently, so if you're not completely satisfied with the LUTs the first time you use them, keep checking back. But go ahead and select and download that, unzip it, and uh, create a folder somewhere where you'll be able to find it. Uh, we'll have to access that in a few minutes. While you're here, you might also want to download the Cinema Raw development software. There may be the odd time when you want to process one of your raw clips uh, in this software prior to bringing it into Edius. If you've got a really bad white balance uh, or overexposure, underexposure, you may want to process it here for better results uh, rather than try and do that in Edius for those extreme cases. All right, so once you have that, uh, let's open up Edius and bring in some of these clips. Now, the first thing that you'll probably notice as you begin to work with the raw clips is that Edius does not present thumbnails for these. And that's a Windows uh, issue. Uh, it'll probably be a couple years, if ever, that Windows uh, develops the ability to display thumbnails for these raw clips. But as you click on any one of these, you will get a preview down here. And so as you click through, you might find the clip or clips that you're looking for. But it's probably just uh, easier to bring them all in from any particular folder. They come in rather quickly, and then it might be easier to delete the ones that you don't want. All right. Now, the first time that you try and play one of these clips, especially if you're out in the field and working off a laptop, and you're wanting to show your client the amazing results of your raw footage, uh, you might be a little bit disappointed. Um, let's, let's drop one on here. And uh, as we try and play this, or uh, the first time that you try and play this on your laptop, like and, unless you have this amazing laptop, uh, but go ahead and just hit uh, play there, and you'll see that uh, we are looking at, what, maybe about one frame per second here. But don't be too discouraged, we can fix this. First of all, let's go up to settings and notice that under system settings, at least in the latest version of Edius Pro version 9, that under importer exporter folder there in system settings, that one of your options is Cinema Raw. Open that up and you'll notice that there's a option there for turning on your GPU for rendering and playing these clips. And once you have those checked, uh, hit apply, hit OK, and try again, you'll notice a huge improvement in the 
playback ability of your even your older laptop. My laptop's a couple years old with a, an older graphics card, and yet it plays these pretty smoothly. Actually, it plays these better when I'm not using screen capture software uh, in the background. Uh, so you will probably notice uh, it playing even a little faster on your laptop. And then if we go up here to this area here and change the resolution of the playback from full to, let's say, half, then even while I've got screen capture software going in the background, but sometimes there doesn't seem to be it pretty much plays it in real time. It might be dropping a few frames here and there. Sounds familiar. So once I discovered those little tips and tricks, I was a lot happier and was able to show my clients some dailies in the field. Let's now see what we can do about processing uh, this raw clip. The way that you do that in EDIUS is go to your effects palette and under color correction, which may be closed at the moment for you, under color correction go down to primary color correction option and just drag and drop that onto your clip. You'll notice an immediate change as EDIUS automatically applies a default LUT to your clip. To see what it's done, let's open up uh, the primary color correction and notice that under color space we see that EDIUS has applied a cinema gamut uh, and if we open this up, Canon Log 2 by default. And this is what most of the other software programs do is uh, start by default by using the Canon Log 2 curve but you can change that uh, quite easily to Canon Log 3, which is a little easier to grade, and that's what I usually do when I start out. Now, I can't remember if that option came by default with EDIUS or if I had to install that LUT. So let's go and show you how to install the Canon LUTs or any other LUTs that you might want to purchase and download. There's a lot of free LUTs on the uh, internet that you might want to try. Some are pretty good and some are not so good but you can try them out. So how do we install LUTs? We go to this little wheel here and uh, we see a list of the registered LUTs. I've already put a lot of these Canon LUTs uh, and registered them already but for those of you just starting out uh, with this uh, here's how you register the LUTs. Just go down here to this little uh, file folder arrow thing here and open that up. Go to the folder where you um, unzipped all of your LUTs, open that up, and what we want are the 3D LUTs, and we want the 33 grid, and uh, I like to work with the full to full range. Now we don't need to uh, register all of these, um, at least at this point, we probably don't, so I'm just going to grab the cinema gamut options here, select all of those, hit open, and we'll select OK here and OK here. It's letting me know that <laughs> these were already registered. But uh, for you doing it the first time, it uh, you probably won't get that error. And just hit OK. And now, if you like, you can change the um, LUT that uh, EDIUS has applied by default from Canon Log 2 to the Canon Log 3, which is a little easier to grade. You'll notice a change uh, showing up as soon as you do that. And uh, in the next option there, make sure that your destination uh, LUT is showing BT709. It's showing up here as project color space because that is how I started this project, is using that color space. If it's not showing up for you there, you can also change it to BT.709, it's an option that you can have there. All right, the next one, base, you can kind of just try both of these out and see which one you want to start with as you begin to uh, fine tune your or, or color grade your shot. And uh, just kind of check back and forth and see which one you'd prefer. I think I'll go with the scene light. Now we can start fine tuning it. Uh, this is just kind of a starting point, and now we can go in and uh, really start working with the clip. What I usually like to do is open up a vector scope to see more closely what uh, the footage is at, 
and uh, kind of keep an eye on it as we make adjustments. We can see that uh, this clip is a little overexposed, and so we're going to want to work with that to bring this down under uh, 100. We can do that by reducing the gain. Let's bring that down so it's under 100. And um, we see that we have a, a few points that are dropping down under um, the zero for our blacks, but let's maybe bring down uh, just a few more to give us a little bit better contrast. And if you want to have a little bit better control, you can spread these out so that uh, your adjustments are a little easier to work with. That looks about good. There's just a few blacks that are dropping under, but to my eye that looks uh, not too bad. And uh, then we can start working with our curves to fine-tune this just a little bit more. To my eyes, it seems a little bluish, um, but uh, let's maybe change our waveform to RGB here and uh, see and confirm that, yes, our blue is just a little hot. Let's uh, maybe first of all try and see what we can do by warming it up with the uh, white balance temperature control here. Let's pull this into the yellows a little bit more. Warm that up a little bit. And uh, as we watch our waveform here, we see that uh, we are bringing down the, the blue there, but uh, maybe bringing up the green too much. Huh? And so let's just tint it a little bit. Take a look at it full screen. And uh, that's uh, looking a lot better. And just one other thing that I might do to this clip is uh, add a little sharpness. By default, the raw footage seems to be a little soft, and so I like to add a little sharpness. Just go find the sharpness uh, filter, drag it onto the clip, and click on sharpness. And I bring them right up somewhere between 25 and 30, and that adds a lot of nice sharpness to it. Now, if you have a number of clips that were shot at the same time, you can make your own little preset uh, out of the um, adjustments that you have made to the LUT. Just, and, and I often just include the sharpness. It saves another step. So with your Shift key held down, select both of these. Right click. Save as a current user preset. And you'll see that it uh, shows up here in your uh, effects palette. And you can rename that to something that you'll know. And so now when we go after another uh, clip that was shot that same morning in that same environment, let's just drag one down here, rather than go through that whole process again uh, with the fine-tune adjustments, you can just grab the preset that you've saved and pop it onto the clip. And uh, it may be that you'll have to go in and uh, still fine-tune it a little bit. But it's a, a much faster start. All right, well, I believe that that does it for this episode of uh, how to work with the raw light footage from the Canon C200 camera. And uh, perhaps in another tutorial, we'll take a look at uh, grading the MP4. Uh, but for now, I think uh, that does it, and we'll see you down the road.